Here we are back again for our second session for the day with Raylene and her site is angel medium numeral seven uh, dot com the number seven and I'll put that at the end as well and we've got our boy Eric hi Eric hello mama hello everybody hi. even though I said this 20 minutes ago uh, so we're going to talk about earthbound spirits and ghosts I don't really have any questions so I'm just going to let you free flow. Let her take the flow. What you got first, Eric? He says, let's talk. Let's talk spirit. He says, let's talk earthbound because there's a little bit of a difference between an earthbound spirit and a regular spirit. Oh. An earthbound spirit is somebody that is stuck on earth that does not want to transition over. Oh. He says there are multiple reasons why these spirits may not want to transition. Anger is one thing that keeps them. Fear is another thing that keeps them. And when I talk about anger and fear, this is fear of punishment of what they're going home to. This is anger of something that they have been holding on to from the life that they've been incarnated. He says there can be some earthbounds that stick, up, stick around on the earth for thousands of years or hundreds of years. God. <laughs> of them are aware that they're dead he says there's many of them that are not aware that they have transitioned and they are in a state of lost or limbo he uses the word limbo and he says that limbo is a place that is real it's a place that souls go to when they get lost when somebody dies and they're unaware of death they're not expecting it something that's sudden a lot of spirits have trouble with crossing over because they're not sure of death. He says, it doesn't happen all the time and there are people that will come and get you and help you. But in most cases, this is a contract to experience the feeling of being lost. He says, when souls reach out in their mind of where am I or help me, even if it's not, I know I'm lost. I know I'm in a place of uncomfortable. He says, in their mind, eventually, there's this thought of help me, and another being will come and help them. They have to ask first, right? They do, because yes, they, as a spirit. An atheist would be a perfect example, right? They don't believe in the afterlife, so there's, you know, I guess. They don't. He they says, but not all atheists will have that experience of being lost in limbo. He says, it's really funny when they come over here and they're like, shit, look at me, I'm still alive. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm feeling good. She goes, to see the personalities of an atheist is really interesting. He says they get to see what life was really like and they're reconnected to what used to be. He says, no, not necessarily atheists, but people that have had a traumatic experience, a traumatic death, they're not aware of their death. People that are in comas, they typically go to this place of limbo. Most of them can hear things around them, but their soul is somewhere else. That's very true. I can, yeah, you can speak to that one. Yeah. I can speak to that one because um, in my coma, do you know that uh, the heart machine, the beep, beep, the beep, yeah, beep. Right. You heard that I, heard, right. I heard that when I was in my coma, but I didn't hear like conversations around me. But I did, I did hear that machine. And I was in like, different dreams, multiple different dreams of being like pulled back. Yeah. And so that limbo of what he explains is, it's, it's a very, I didn't see other people around me when I was in this limbo. Say that again. No. I didn't see other, Okay. the limbo. What you just said, because mm -hmm. uh, you froze. You froze too. I, I was saying, Eric, stop messing with our connection. No, it's not Eric. It's Esmeralda. She's apologizing because she's not trying to do that. Um, but I was saying when I was in these other dimensions or this limbo, it was very much like different dimensions. I didn't see other people around me per se, but I did have voices that I would hear. And so he's explaining that they can hear the voices of people that are living and they're not exactly seeing what they're messing with. Some of them can with lower vibrations but not all. Some earthbounds are negative and have intentions of wanting a human life, which is why they haven't transitioned. Some of these earthbounds have been around for so long that they have learned how to 
use your energy to give them more of a living experience. They choose to make people angry because it's anger that they feed off of that gives them more energy. He says not all earth bounds are negative. He says there are some that are positive that just have not transitioned. In a lot of cases, it takes a family member or a guardian to come through and give that message of you have transitioned. If they're not wanting to transition, and not force someone to transition. So in some cases, you gotta say, okay, you let me know when you're ready and I will be back. You leave them to be in this place of loneliness because earthbound are not happy. They are lonely, they are alone, and they need to transition. He says, when you think of somebody who's afraid of transitioning because they committed a lot of crimes, Say somebody was a serial killer and they had a belief system behind them. That belief system made them feel like they were going to rot in hell. So what did this soul do? This soul stood in this lower dimension out of fear of having consequences to pay or out of fear of the unknown. But what they don't realize is where they're at is probably the worst of their consequences. Yeah, I can imagine. So I guess uh, those who want to stay and they will never ask for help, right? So they, they can stay forever. He says they can stay forever, but in a lot of cases, it's not a forever, not a forever stay for them. He's saying checking into the hotel, checking out of the hotel. <laughs> All right, so so <laughs> well, can't you get rid of these earthbound, the bad earthbound ones, even if they don't want to? I mean, can't their guides say, look, dude, that's enough. You did this because it was a spiritual contract. Are you sure you don't want a little nudge? Here's the line. Yes. yes, he says their guides can come down. And in a lot of cases, they are aware of them. They just choose not to reach out. He was explaining that this dimension of where Earthbound stay is very connected to Earth. And it has that earthly feeling of life, of living, of breathing. They have the sense of their chest going up, their chest going down. They have a sense of somewhat of a solid but not solid body because they have not fully made that transition. He's explaining that after so long of not being able to take energy from another living person or living being or even an animal, if they're unable to get the energy that they're needing, then they start to diminish that human life that they had wow. and it becomes more of a ghost oh i'll talk about that in a second but what powers do they have are they able to are they solid enough they're like on ghost can they move things he says these things can throw things at you because they are in this lower vibration they can move things on you they can move electricity they can drain your electronics they can drain your energy it's very much something that they put their mind to and they do it. They have the ability to get into somebody's mind and put negative thoughts to make that person into a low vibration to get the energy that they're looking for. And they can possess a body, as you said, right? Yeah, if you're very... This doesn't happen often. People that are really sensitive and... You know, say you do something spiritual and you don't protect yourself, you're opening a door. You always want to make that intention because when you don't, you can allow something else to come in not knowing what it is that you're communicating with, which is why I tell everybody protection and intention is very important when doing this type of work. Well, how can you tell um, if you're having a negative thought if it's just your own versus some earthbound spirit uh, giving it to you? He says, mom, you have to realize that you're having a human experience. And so negative thoughts are going to be something that is going to be a part of everybody's life, whether it's often or whether it's not often. He says the way to distinguish is notice, did your mood drastically change from a week ago? Did you move to a new location? And now you started having these bad thoughts, these night terrors. Your mood is going to change from the person that you naturally are yes. he says so you pay attention to you your family members pay attention to you do they see a change what's going on with my mom what's going on with my daughter what's going on with my son you notice their actions because other things can affect their mood drastically 
And he and said, so. And there's a possession, right? So you know, you, you, these are ways that you can tell that you or a family member are possessed, just the suddenness of the change. Yes, the suddenness of the change. He goes, mom, possession is really a scary word when you think about it. Uh, he says attachment is a, a better word to use because oh, okay. people form and he says not to scare anybody, but people can have multiple attachments, not only one. And there's different parts of the body where they can attach. Um, hypnosis can remove attachments. You don't have to have an exorcism. Hollywood has really fucked shit up <laughs> because it's not that way. Yeah. You can do a, a hypnosis regression and have these attachments removed. You can do it yourself. You can write a letter if you know that there's an attachment. You know that it's draining a certain area of you write a letter and then burn that letter with sage or palo santo go up and down your body with it crystals crystals move entities black crystals black tourmaline and shungite if your child is having really bad behavior problems they're really sensitive or if you're anyone you know is their mood has shifted put crystals underneath their bed you want to use four Shungite or black tourmaline. Those two crystals are amazing. One on each corner of the mattress underneath the bed. The child or the adult does not need to know that they're there. But what it does is it breaks up the energy and it breaks up that attachment. After about a week of the crystals being there, you're going to notice you feeling better. Your child, if you feel like your mood has been really affected and it's not you, take a look at places you've been. Where could you have picked up an attachment from? Have you gone to any museums lately? Have you gone to a place that just had low vibration and weren't protecting yourself? Because you can pick up any form of attachments, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, so you have to probably clean those crystals afterwards, huh? You do. And so every four weeks, you want to clear the crystals. Um, moonlight. I use the moon as a, kind of like a biological clock for me. Every time we have a full moon, even three days before and three days after, you've got about a week of the moon energy where you can put the crystals out there. You leave them out overnight. It cleanses them and it charges them. Then you can place the crystals back underneath the mattress. Now, it's not necessary to leave them there forever, but I do find that they help you to ground. They're really beneficial if you're just consistent with cleansing them and putting them back under, especially if you or your child is having nightmares or if they're telling you i'm afraid of the dark i'm afraid yeah. that something's in the closet there's beings this can be interdimensional beings or this can be earthbound this could be spirit so the crystals will protect from also interdimensional beings spirits negative or positive okay all right so um where do they attach normally he goes well mom they can attach to a shoulder they can attach to a leg a head, a stomach. He says, you can, can notice. Be, can that be a, a reason why somebody might have a shoulder joint pain or yes. stomach problems? Yes, yes, so, so problems. Getting rid of the attachment can make that pain go away. Do I have any right now? My thumb hurts and my back hurts. He says, no, mom, you don't have any attachments right now, but he's explaining that these entities can make you say eat sugar, crave things that are bad for you like alcohol, it's because they're linking on to this human aspect that they once enjoyed. Um, drugs of any type, he says, it's not going to be you that is actually engaging in the drugs or the activity, it's going to be the entity that's wanting you to engage in these types of things. It seems like anybody who's suffering from anything, emotional, mental, physical, should be scanned to see if they have any attachments. How do they do that? Do they go to an energy reader or, or is there any way they can do well? You don't necessarily have to pay anybody for this. You can do this by yourself to find out if you have an attachment of any type. Uh -huh. Do you remember the muscle? It's like muscle testing. Muscle testing. It says, yeah. show me yes, show me no. So you can ask your higher self. What you do is you stand up and you say, higher self, show me my yes answer. Your body's going to move either forward or backwards. I know that works so well. Oh my yeah. God. You can ask any yes or no questions. It's, it's yes. Yeah. And then you ask how yourself, show me no. And then your body's going to do another. Likely it's going to go forward or the opposite of what it just did. And so once you've established, okay, there's an entity, then you can go to an energy healer. 
energy healers can remove attachments. Hypnosis, I prefer hypnosis. I've had an attachment myself. I've had six of them. Oh God. And they were all removed. And I felt, I felt lighter after I was done with it. I felt healed. I felt um, in control. I wasn't eating sugars anymore at that time in my life. I needed like coffee. I needed sweets every single day, multiple times a day, not only just once. And once I got rid of that, I found that I had an attachment. There was this little girl that had not transitioned. She was seven years old and she was the one that was making me eat sweets and sugars because she, her parents killed her, which is why she didn't want to transition. She was afraid of reuniting with them. She was aware that she was dead, but did not choose to cross over. And so earthbounds, they can be children, they can be adults. If a child had a horrific experience as a child and then they died, they're not going to want to go over to family members that cause pain to them. Wow. So what happens is the energy healer, the hypnosis worker, the practitioner, they are trained to talk to the entities to help them to remove them. Now, not always are you going to hear from them directly if you go to an energy healer and they remove the blockage they work on, whether it's a shoulder, a stomach, a chakra, they will work on that to remove that blockage. Now it's gonna be up to you as the human to maintain your body's health. Drinking plenty of water, if you have a lot of water in your body, entities are not gonna to want to attach to you because they do not like that grounded sensation. If you are very ungrounded, you're gonna be likely to have something attached to you. Mm. Oh, wow. So what other ways can you, and for example, what do you do, Raylene, to protect from attachments to you know, the entities from attaching to you again? So what I do is I open up, when I, whenever I do readings, I do a prayer. I do my intention of what I'm connecting to. Whenever I connect to spirit by myself, I make sure that I have my boundaries there. And boundaries are, I'm only connecting to positive positive love and light, Eric is who I'm connecting to, grandpa, daughter. I intend who it is that I want. I don't just leave it open for anything to come through. Yeah. And so I really learned how to put these boundaries down because of Eric. He's taught me, you know, I've had some really hard lessons of being exhausted, being overwhelmed because I kept giving to spirits and I did not put those boundaries down. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, you guys got to go. Your family members are gone. See you yeah. later. And so you put those boundaries down with spirits. And then you do not feel drained. You know who you're connecting to. Um, and so for those, like if you're trying to have a session and you've never had this person before, I go into a meditation and I put white light around me. Mm -hmm. And that's also another form of, of protecting, just intending to have white light. You do not have to be religious to do a prayer. Um, archangels are very spiritual. They're in just about every religion. Um, I am not religious myself, but I do believe that I do need to be protected and you know that there's other energies out there that can affect your mood in a negative way. So, you know, if you go back and look at videos, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Oh, if you, you know, not everybody is, is a medium that's about to have a session. What does Joe Blow and, and Jane Doe do to in, in their daily life to make sure? I guess be health, health, eat healthful things, lots of water grounding just you know try to have a higher bright as high a vibration as you can anything else he says that's actually a key point mom is the vibration having music on around you to maintain that vibration but even though everybody is not a medium he says everybody still connects to their spirit guides unknowingly or knowingly and so to intend that white light to be around you whether it's in the morning or whether it's at night before you go to bed and this is a way to protect where crystals, you're an empath, Elisa. And so you carry energy from other people always. If you wear a crystal, anything black or anything purple, anything brown, that will also protect your energy from entities or from other humans that may have a negative mood that's affecting you. Okay. So um, it's not necessarily, you know, all, it's only mediums that need to because everybody needs to do it you're all sensitive beings you're all having an experience we're all energetic beings just taking on a form of a, of a body and well, so um eric michelle at the age of eight suddenly changed from being super happy and just almost too happy whatever at you extremely negative and poorly behaved was that an attachment 
he says yes. He's not using the term attachment, but he says that there's something that was affecting her during these times. As she raised her vibration and became more happier and more loving, the thing didn't have an interest in her. What was it? An earthbound spirit? An interdimensional being? Uh it's not interdimension. I'm looking at a spirit. Um, it's a male. He looks like he's about the age of 35 years of age. He still has not transitioned over. He's someone that does not want to transition, he says. He's not interested in transitioning. He's no longer on your property, though. You've had your home for a long time, haven't you? Oh, yeah, like 26, 27 years. So, yeah. That's so what was, was that guy a murderer? I mean, what was he? What was wrong with him? What was wrong with him? He likes alcohol and he likes negative moods. He did not murder anybody. He does not intend to murder anybody. He likes having the life of human. He likes experiencing anger, sadness. He likes to get people in trouble, specifically children. Oh God, no kidding. Like acting out. Do you have any act, uh, attachments now at all? Michelle? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. What about Arlene? Oh, I'll just go through. Anybody in the family have attachments now? No, but Arlene is very sensitive and she oh, wow. can be easily subject to them. Okay. She's got a very high vibration and she trusts what she's communicating with too much. Oh. Arlene needs to learn boundaries. That way she's not just opening up to anything. Okay. All right, good. So nobody, uh, nobody in the family. He says, you're all safe, Mana. Eric's yeah. going protect you guys very much. Spirits can protect you from negative energies. And so if you have a, a loved one on the other side, um, if you don't have anyone on the other side, we have spirit guides. Um, there's source, there's archangels. You can ask them to protect you from entities, from attachments. You can ask them to help you to release things. And you may, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. You also can pick up attachments from other people. So say you start a new relationship and this person has a lot of baggage with them. You can pick up something that they're carrying. If you decide to have intercourse with them, well, then you're carrying whatever it is that they're carrying. Okay, so whatever interdimensional thing or spirit, earth, earth, spirit. okay, ooh, wow. Yes. Oh my God, safe sex takes on a whole new meaning. I <laughs> oh my God, he goes, there's no, Earth, you're so inappropriate. He goes, there's no condom to protect against that one. Oh, really? No kidding. All right, so is this plane that these the earthbound spirits are in, is that, where is that? Is that on Earth in the same plane we are in? Or is it a new one that's a little bit above it? Or? You can consider this the fourth plane, the astral dimension. And it's a dimension that us as humans can access as you're awake or as you're asleep. A lot of people meditate to get to that. Paying attention. That, that's the okay. Yeah. And so you're not going to physically see it as you're awake, but you can definitely access it when you lose track of driving, but you made it to your destination. When you're watching a movie, the movie's over, you realize I ain't paying attention. What was the movie about? You are accessing this other dimension. And so where they're at is considered the fourth plane, the fourth astral plane dimension. Okay. What about ghosts? Are they in the same plane? And what are ghosts? How do they differ from earthbound spirits? He's saying that ghosts are what you would consider a ghost is somebody that has not had a human experience, has not lived to be able to feel the tangible life as human. Um, when you think of ghosts, you want to think of something that is lower. It is below us. It is not third. You would say first or second dimension below. Um, these can be entities of some type, something that is creature-like. Um, poltergeist can also be referred to as a ghost. A poltergeist is something that you create with your own thoughts, um, but it has not lived as a human and has not lived as anything else besides soul entity. So Casper, so, Casper's not a ghost. He's, a, he's an earthbound spirit. <laughs> he's an earthbound. <laughs> why, why have ghosts? So what is their purpose? He says, when they were created, it wasn't something that was thought of 
things are created by humans by their thoughts if they have really negative thoughts really nasty thoughts it's something that a human is creating but not something that source is creating he says so it's still connected to everything that is he says we're all connected to everybody over here even those entities there is some form of connection to those and spirit all at the same time what is their purpose he says it's not a very good purpose why these beings are around he says that their purpose is to mostly inflict some form of pain on somebody or to cause fear into children or adults these beings can manifest themselves into a solid form if needed. A lot of people will report seeing like a creature or feeling something that is not there. People can wake up with scratch marks on them. This is what you would consider ghost or entity, something that has not lived human life or even really experienced a positive spirit life. It's very negative and very lower dimension. Well, why do we, why do our thoughts create that? I mean, how do you do that? We go to a scary movie and all of a sudden we think about the, the creature and we create it or? He says in some cases, yes, for children that have overactive minds, that oh. can happen. But he says, if you're just a person that is stuck in this really negative mood of my wife left me, she took the kids, now I hate the world, you are now creating this negative, oh, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, this negative thought, this negative thought pattern. <coughs> excuse me when you think of i just want her to be in pain i want her to learn from what she's caused me even though you may have been the one that fucked up you're still trying to inflict pain with your thoughts and somebody else and so that thought is creating something negative okay so how do you uh get rid of a ghost if you've created or somebody else has created one poltergeist so that poltergeist Poltergeists are really hard to get rid of when you create your own thought form. You have to completely move furniture all the way around in every room, but specifically your bedroom. Um, cleansing, cleansing the home with sage, Paulo, you have to change your thought pattern. If you're going to stick in this negative thought pattern, you're never going to make movement, well, then you're going to repeat that pattern of something else coming back to you. So you need to change your mood. You need to change your thoughts in order for you to really have that negative experience completely gone. And Raise your Use the Tibetan bells clink together in the room, or maybe you just to burn. in for the poltergeist to, to vanish in thin air or thick air whatever and no. you can burn salt in a pyrex dish you know a flame proof dish uh, that's doused with rubbing alcohol does that do it rubbing. it yeah. does very well when i first did it in my in one of the rooms there was a brown crust so i think that was because that shouldn't be negative energy carbon and, and then so I, I dumped that out put fresh did it again and there was no brown crust right yes so when you burn it and you have brown or black you're clearing away negative energy um and so you really want to be careful with that use a glass that is fireproof oh, yes. uh, when you do it and you don't need a whole lot of rubbing alcohol i'd say if you've got to say this is your plate right you're going to put salt all on this you'll sprinkle a couple of alcohol and then you'll light that Okay. It will burn out when it's all the way done. You don't burn it. You don't put it out yourself. You let it completely burn. It'll it'll go out on its own. Well, okay. Where? How big an area? You have to do it in every single room, or can you do it in one central room in the house, or every area of the home? And so, say your room, your kids' room, your front room, your kitchen, oh, right, right. your basement. You want to do every room because every room is carrying energy. Yeah. And once you're done with that, you move your furniture around. You're moving stagnant energy out. Oh, I see stagnant energy. Cool. All right, just a couple more things, and we're going to close. Um, how do we protect? Well, we protect ourselves from ha having ghosts because you know by changing our thoughts, preventing those thoughts from happening. All right, so Eric, when you transitioned, did were you earthbound? It seems like you weren't because it was a spiritual no. contract between us, but I don't know. No, he says I was not earthbound. I knew. He says I knew what I did. And when I transitioned over, he says I was very well aware of it. 
I did not want no part to do with Earth. Oh God, I bet not. Oh, but you do come to the uh, to the uh, earthly plane, right? To, that's Every day, he says, "Mom, the reason my vibration is so low, and so many people talk to me, is because." I really worked on keeping my vibration low so I can communicate with everyone the way that I do. Because I'm not going anywhere. High, right? Yeah. He you said, you see, high. I want it to be bliss. I want it to be happy. If I would have stuck instead of transitioning, I would be one angry asshole. He says, I was free and I wanted that. So, so, says, you want, so when you lower your vibration to be here, does that mean you don't feel blissful? Fuck no, Eric. Good. He says, I'm always blissful. He Thank says, God. there's nothing that can change my personality or my mood at this point. Oh, that's good. And my dad, who was a militant asshole atheist, when he died, he he didn't get earthbound. And he didn't like, you know, because my mother was behind him in the bed, in the hospital bed, and he, she reached out, um, his he reached out to grab him and said, come on, Jose, let's go. And then he saw her, he saw my deceased sister, Denise, and then he saw Eric. So that's when he knew that he was not hallucinating from the Ativan they gave him. He goes, why would I think about Eric? See, he was such an asshole. That's when he realized that he had died and he was in, uh, going to the afterlife. Let's talk about haunting somebody. <laughs> <laughs> really? All right, well, thank you so much, Eric. I love you. Raylene, I love you. You guys check out Raylene at Angel Medium, the number seven dot com, which I will put right here. Y'all, please subscribe to the channel and you know, share this uh, video to uh, your timeline on, on Facebook or whatever, uh, because there might be a lot of people who need this, okay? Yeah. Especially those with difficult kids, teenagers, whatever. Uh, so really do share this and ask them to share it too. Also like the video if you can. And uh, all right. Sayonara. Live a ghost free, happy life, people. Ghost free. Bye. Bye. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.